In this video, we're going to look at using R to find normal probabilities, in particular standard normal and general normal probabilities. Now, we've been showing how to find out our answers to Z problems and other regular normal problems by using the Z table, where we've had previously computed to two decimal places almost all of the Z values that you're going to encounter, except ones that are very large, which we just assume have area zero or one to the left, depending on what side of the table they are. However, in practice, this isn't what statisticians do. We use computers to solve our probabilities. They give us more decimal places. We don't need to end at minus 3.49, which is useful when you're dealing with very large numbers and having the more decimal places is going to help. So in particular, what we use to find the probability of being less than a Z score in R is the P norm function. So there are lots of these function types in R and they all have the same general trend. First, I give some sort of descriptor of what I'm doing. So P means probability to the left in R. So P for probability. Then we give some descriptor of the distribution. So in this case, norm stands for normal. Then we give the number we want the probability to the left of. So here this would be our Z score. Remember our Z table also reads our areas to the left. And then we insert what is our mu sigma. So when I'm looking at standard normal, I know that my mu is zero and my standard deviation is one. So if I want to know my probability of being less than the Z score, I use the P norm function with mean zero and standard deviation one. Earlier by hand, we looked at this particular problem, finding our probability that Z is less than minus 1.72. So if I was doing this in R, I would type in P norm of minus 1.72, comma 0, comma 1. And what it would print out for me is that probability to the left. So in our slides, these gray boxes represent code that I've written into R. And the numbers that come out after the two pound sign or what the output from R would have been. Now, if I want to match this to what's going on in the Z table, I'll round to four decimal places to make sure that I get an agreement. So just to show you this, how it works in R itself, I'm going to pull up R so we can take a look at plugging this code into R. So I've pulled up R and I'm now in the console. So the console is where I type my functions. We use it as a keyboard. As soon as I hit enter, it's going to give me my results. So we use our P norm function and then we put in our value minus 1.72, our mean and our standard deviation, that should be a two. Hit return and I am going to get that value back which if we stop for a second and peek at our previous slides, we'll see this is what we got when we use the Z table. Now in R, there's lots of functions that have arguments that are mandatory and then arguments that are optional that will have a default if you don't specify anything. So to help ourselves a little bit in R, the P norm function will default to mu zero and standard deviation one if you don't put anything in there. So we could also just write P norm of minus 1.72 to get the answer that we had before. When I don't specify my mu sigma, it assumes that we're doing standard normal. It's still good to know that we could write 0, 1, because eventually we're going to look at questions where we have a mu and a sigma, and we can just put those in as opposed to converting to a Z score first. I could put my X value in, say what's the probability of being to the left of this X value? have the mean mu, have the standard deviation sigma, and not go through the problem of pre-converting things. So that will be the advantage of doing things that way. Now, if I wanted to find my probability being greater than, we remember how we use the Z table for greater than. We went one minus the table entry because the table was giving us area to the left. And if I'm looking for my greater than, I'm looking for area to the right and everything we know sums up to one. So our probability of being greater than that number should be one minus the probability that we are less than that number. So if I wanna know my probability, my Z is greater than 2.18, I go one minus my P norm function because my P norm is like the table value. It just goes to more decimal places. So this is what it would look like. I will show you again, just typing it into R. 
So when I type this into R, I'm going one minus my P norm of 2.18, and we'll get that value back that we saw in the slides. Now we have one other type of problem that we are going to look at, and that's the between two Z scores problem. Now remember, when we're using our Z table, what we were doing was we were looking for the area between two values. So we were going the area to the left of the bigger number minus the area to the left of the smaller number. So I would take my Z entry to the left of the bigger number, my Z table entry to the left of the smaller number. And so we go table entry minus table entry. Well, if our P norm function is like our table entry, we'll take the P norm of the bigger number minus the P norm of the smaller number. So I want to know Z's between minus 1.32 and 1.04. I'll take P norm of 1.04 minus P norm of minus 1.32, which will give me the answer that we're looking for. Again, just to more decimal places than what we have in our table. Now, we can also do this with general normal probabilities, as I alluded to, by using our x and our actual mu and sigma. So we looked at this problem in the notes. So the amount of time it takes for a headache medication to work follows a normal distribution with mean 15 minutes and standard deviation 1.5 minutes. So part one, what's the probability a headache sufferer will receive relief in under 10 minutes? So under 10 minutes means less than 10. So I want to know my probability of being less than 10 in a distribution with mu 15 and standard deviation 1.5. So if I wanted to go and do this in R, I would take my P norm function, because that's area to the left, of what? I want it to the left of the number 10 for a distribution with mean of 15 and a standard deviation of 1.5. And that will give us the same answer as what we did when we were doing this the long way by hand. So we can use P norm directly on general, our general normal probabilities. And then we can see that the other part of the question was the probability it takes between 12 and eight minutes. So we know the probability being between two values is table entry of the big one minus table entry of the smaller one. P norm's the same thing. So P norm of the bigger number minus P norm of the smaller number. I'm just going to do it using the actual mu sigma. So I could solve that problem going P norm of the bigger X, 18, mu 15, standard deviation 1.5, minus my P norm of the smaller X, 12, with mu 15 and standard deviation 1.5, and that is gonna solve my probability for me. Now, in our notes, we were doing two kinds of normal probabilities, what I called my forwards and my backwards question. So just like we can do forwards and reverse questions when we're doing our questions by hand, we can also do it with R. So if I wanna look up a percentile. So this is, this is the area to the left. What would be my X value? Or this is the area to the left. What would be my Z value? What we do is we use the Q norm function. So we said P represents probability to the left. Q functions in R say this is the probability to the left. What is my variable value? So Q, reverse lookup on an area to the left. Norm, I'm looking at the normal distribution. The first number is the probability to the left. And then I'm gonna have my mu and my sigma. And don't forget, if we're doing standard normal, mu zero, sigma one, or we could just drop the mu sigma because it will know automatically if I don't specify anything, it's going to assume by default I mean zero one. So we have this question here that we did. Test scores on a national exam follow a normal distribution with mean 65 and standard deviation 15. Students that score in the bottom 25th percentile on the exam will be made to take tutoring classes. Students at or below what grade will be required to take tutoring classes? Right, so if we're in the bottom 25th percentile, that means there's probability 25% to the left. And we know the people at that grade will get tutoring classes. So it's saying, what is the X value where we have 25% to the left? In a distribution where we have mean 15, 
means 6, 65 and standard deviation 15. Well, what we can do is we can use the Q norm function because this is a backwards probability. So Q norm, I give my area to the left 0 0.25. We give our mean 65 and we give our standard deviation 15. So I type that into R. That is what we have in that gray box. And then after the double pound sign, that would be the output from R. So P norm, here's the X or Z, what's the area to the left? Q norm, here's the area to the left, what is the X or Z value? And that is gonna be how we are using R to solve for probabilities in this second unit.